what is it about basements that give us the heebie-jeebies? Some of the scariest horror movies of our times always feature a creepy basement. Think of the McNeil residents from The Exorcist, Silence of the Lambs, The Evil Dead, Psycho, The People Under the Stairs, and there's literally even a movie called The Basement. I was personally traumatized by my first basement in the 1990 blockbuster Home Alone, which had a basement scene that has kept me above ground since I was four years old. But it's not just movie producers that see the basement as more than a spot to toss next year's Christmas lights. In fact, Freud thought of it as the receptacle of the subconscious. And Joseph Campbell relates the basement in his hero's journey as the abyss, the unknown, the belly of the well, the threshold, the underworld, and even the death a protagonist must face while fighting off demonic forces of Satan's hell before emerging victorious in the final transformation. However, unlike Campbell's hero, tonight's victim isn't sent to the basement to fight off the demons and monsters from the underworld, but instead to resist the wicked and vile torture and her eventual death from the evil lurking above the floorboards. So, Jen, what are we drinking tonight? It's called the Dangerous Girl. Dangerous. Um, it is tequila, Aperol, Orgot syrup, and lemon juice. I kind of like it, actually. It looks kind of like gua- like a guava flavored something, so I'm excited. But at the same time, because it's like that, that orange color of guava, you mm-hmm. know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. But I know that it's not going to be guava, but my mind keeps thinking it's going to be guava. So I know I'm going to be disappointed. It's very, the, the, the lemon feels like a, a little bit of a lot, but I don't hate it. No, it's not the worst thing I've ever had. No. No. I not can't, our best, but definitely not our worst. Right. It's average. Above average. Slightly above average. Yeah, above hard. Yeah. I like it. Hmm. So what was the actual hint? Bad girl. Bad girl. Bad girl. Bad, bad girl. Yeah, toot, that's toot. what I knew. Yeah. <laughs> Beep, beep. You can do the toot toots and the beep beeps. Toot toot. Beep beep. This uh, is going to be a pretty dense episode. I'm not going to make it two parts, but there is a lot of information. And this is like one of those feel good episodes. So. <laughs> I, if, I'm if not sure what you mean by that. <laughs> if Instantly, I'm worried. This is one of those episodes that, you know, if you're if you're going to Paul Paul's house with your kids in the car Go ahead and remove those headphones and, and let them hear in. Oh my god! <laughs> I have a feeling that's a that's a, a lie, and this is really an advanced uh, warning. <laughs> <laughs> so the hint is bad, girl. So Jen, where are we going, and who are we killing? I think we're going to Los Angeles mm. in the eighties. I haven't decided who we are killing, but I, I, I'm I'm torn between a couple of things. But I think I'm going to go with. Um, the interpretation of bad as good. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, you're so bad. Mm. Like as a compliment. So she's not th- like this. This isn't a killer. Like the the lady's not a the bad girl's not a killer. I don't know. My other guess was that it's like a school girl oh. who's like bad and misbehaves by killing someone. I don't know. I really have no idea. But I'm saying Los Angeles in the 80s. That's that's the one thing I am sure about. I'm going to say we're going to Ohio in 1997. And oh, very specific here. I don't know why. Um, and I think this is a, a a lady killer episode. And I, I was going to say like more. No, I'm starting to do what you do. I say, I think it's either this or this. It's a black. There's nothing wrong with that. You guys get so much crap. There is nothing wrong with having multiple options. It is a a. Uh, like a she's a serial dater and, and kills all the guys she dates like Ooh. not necessarily has like seven husbands but just you know like a so not a black widow but a like a serial dater killer yeah but a well, female right a femme fatale yeah if you will. yeah surprise shot surprise shot we don't know what they are because they're a surprise what are we drinking milk what is this milk it's called a surprise. I don't understand why this is new. 
I think it smells like sake. It is sake. Ah, yeah. If this is your first episode, go to talkmurder.com. I'm putting all my sources and photos on the blog there, and I'm putting the whole story there with all the pictures that you really have to see. Anyway, this is where we're going to tonight, 3850 East New York Street. Does that mean we're in New York, or is that just the name of the street? Uh, I gotcha. This is actually Indianapolis, Indiana. Oh, Uh, you're not that far off. Yeah, yeah. I was closer. Geographically. Yes. So do you see the house to the right? Yes. We're actually going to the house to the left. Well, there's not a house to it. The lot, yeah. So this house was torn down where we're going to tonight. Always a good sign when they actually tear the house down because of the things that happened in there. (laughs) Yes. It's a good sign. Once I learned from a video is just because the building is not there does not mean that the spirits do not reside there. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't rebuild over it. This Mm -hmm. house was torn down in 2012, I believe. And this is the house before it was torn down. Oh. So go back. That's the lot. And this is the house after. Some boarded up windows, I see. Yeah. And I do have a video of a bunch of, I wouldn't call them vandals, just kids, I guess, that snuck into this house. And it's kind of crazy. They actually went under it, the house, through like a little... A hole mm-hmm. in the ground, and they came up from the basement because you can't just get in there. It's you know hard to get in that house. Everything's right. boarded up, the windows are barred. I mean everything. The mm-hmm. police had shut it down. This house looks familiar. I uh, you're not going to know this house, but okay. I do want to say I have that video of these kids. It's like a seven minute video. I'm putting that on talkmar.com so you can see the full inside of the house. It was a great find. I'm glad I found that because it really kind of puts things into perspective. But like I said, we are going to 3850 East New York Street, Indianapolis, Indiana, the home of Indiana Jones, right? No. I I don't think so. Okay. Now, this home that you're seeing right now at the time is completely full of kids. We're actually going to a few days before Halloween 1965. Wait, when you say it's full of kids, does that mean like kids are living there or there are bodies of children? <laughs> because context is everything. <laughs> it's a good good call out. No, it's full of kids. The mother had seven kids of her own wow. when she was there. No, thank you. And that plus, still doesn't answer my question. <laughs> and no, there were no there was only one body found here. Okay. But there was a lot of kids before the person that we're going to talk about before the victim got murdered in the house, the whole neighborhood would hang out here in this house. Like all the kids, the it teens. Was the, it was the hangout spot. It was the hangout spot. Even uh, though it was a filthy, you know, rodent infested, ew. worse than Jen's room house. <laughs> I just have to let you know that my room is not bad anymore. <laughs> oh, we didn't get to see how what you've done with it. Oh, that's because... I mean, it painted it. I painted it. Oh, well, we'll, well see it next I, time. A friend painted it because I can't paint. <laughs> so, but these kids would come over and they'd smoke cigarettes and they would drink. And there was one adult there, which we're going to talk about tonight. They called her mom. I'm gonna get into this later, but I'm just mm-hmm. trying to prime the episode a little bit. So we are going to October 1965. This is the end of October. Uh, the 26th, 27th, something like that. Now, this photo you're seeing right now, if you want to describe it for the audience, Nicole, this is one of the bed frames in the house. This was taken as these kids were living here. So you can kind of see how filthy this house is. Ooh. Ooh. It's it just, is that a mattress? Yeah, that's a mattress. Box this spring. is completely eaten up by rats. Ugh. And it's flipped over. It's just a complete mess. Um, So that's what these kids were living in. They were living in filth. A few days before Halloween, it is about 1.32 in the morning, and all these kids are sleeping, but the only snores you can hear are coming from the mother of the house. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about her. Her name is Gertrude, which I'm going to call her Gert from this point on. Gertie? Gertie. Yeah, or Gertie, whatever. So Gert is snoring deep, heavy but it's not like it's not like how Nicole snores. It's more like I a, don't snore. It's more like a wheezy, nasally 
she's Ooh. an older woman, so you'll see what I'm talking about. Like a nasally old woman type of snore. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So that sound is echoing through the whole house, through all the walls and everything. Ooh. And it's amplified to all the rooms because none of the rooms have doors anymore in the house. Because if you have doors in the house, that's where sin can be born. Oh, <laughs> or a child. Sin. <laughs> There's no doors because privacy is nothing more but an invitation to sin uh. and 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 the act and the acting on impure thoughts. Does it not count if she? I mean, she has kids. Yeah, she, she has seven on, of her own. Right, right. They, all right, she has seven of her own kids in the house. There are two other girls, which I'm about to talk about now, plus a few other random boys that stayed over so okay. th- i mean there's 15 people in this house okay. oh my gosh and she's the only adult Gritty. she's the only adult and okay. she's sneezing snoring she's some sort of seven dwarf jenny which is 14 at the time she is the only one awake she intentionally stayed awake and i'm gonna show you her picture in a second she stayed awake to hear that normal snoring sound because Tonight, she's going to venture down into the basement. And Ooh. she can only do that if the mother is snoring, all the kids are sleeping, and she's completely stealth silent. See, this is my thoughts on basements. You don't go down there <laughs> at night. Oh, like, this... that's recipe for finding shit you don't want to find. Yeah. This is like the Home Alone basement, you know, that, that, uh, Unfinished. that cooking. Uh, was it that? The heater? Yeah. Uh, yeah. The heater that was like... Yeah. Oh, my God. It scared the shit out of me when I was a kid. <laughs> but, yeah, no. I still don't change levels of a house at nighttime unless I absolutely have to. Mm-hmm. You just don't. It's like the same thing with, you know, walking to the bathroom in the middle of the night in the dark. Yeah. 14-year-old Jenny starts to crawl out of her room. Now, she's not lucky enough to sleep on that mattress that was turned over. She's actually sleeping on a bunch of dirty clothes oh. on the floor. And her crutches are propped up against what used to be the door, but now it's like the side of the wall. Because around this time, a lot of kids use crutches. Polio. Because polio. in 1955, there was a polio outbreak. And mm-hmm. that's why, like, um, Forrest Gump, you know, I think I he had braces. polio. Yeah, the, yeah. Even kids that survived the polio outbreak, they would be mangled for life if you will they'd be all kind of crippled not forrest gump though he, got a, gump, he got a scholarship yeah. to alabama he was playing football <laughs> ran across america yeah i just felt like running but um so so jenny is the same way she's jenny. she's not crippled yeah she's not <laughs> crippled but she would make more noise walk in on her crutches than she would just crawl in now it takes yeah. her about an hour to get to the basement door she has to crawl out of the bedroom through the kitchen and I'm gonna show you in a minute. The floor mm. is pure filth. Ugh. There's rat droppings everywhere. Ugh. It's just it's a nightmare. So she's crawling really slow so she doesn't wake the mother up. She must really want to get down to that basement. Yeah. So she must know something's down there that she doesn't want to see. Right. Well, the basement is the only other room besides the mother's room that has a door. So she has a creek open the basement door. And I'll show you a picture of that in a minute. But she slowly, once she makes it through the kitchen and she's safe, the mother is still snoring. She turns the knob of the basement door and it starts creaking open. <laughs> this has been this has been a good for a Halloween episode. <laughs> yeah. All right. As soon as the door opens, now th- this is a real account. What I'm telling you, this is not fantasy. This is not a novel. This story is 100 percent true and. The information I'm telling you is corroborated by a lot of witnesses to this story. Just so you know, okay. I'm not making any of this up. When you said the door is creaking, all I could think about was Thriller. <laughs> as soon as the door opens just a little bit, there is a smell that pours Uh-oh. out. It's putrid. It's eye-watering. It just, ugh, oh, God. Oh, you know, really bad. It's... Not the smell of death, though. It's not the smell of feces or anything. It's the smell of burning flesh. 
Oh, a burning flesh, burning flesh. Well, flesh that has already been burned. Oh, my gosh. It, this is taking a Sweeney Todd turn. <laughs> Never seen Sweeney Todd, actually. Well, they, oh, uh, we should watch this. It's a great movie. It's a musical. Mm hmm. The door opens and that smell of burning flesh comes pouring out. This right here will really make you want to uh, keep that quiche down we, we ate earlier this that morning. It was a good quiche. It was. But when you're so hungry and on the verge of starvation like poor old 14-year-old Jenny was, a normal person would smell burning flesh and it would make us throw up. No. But to her... And she didn't want to think this, but it's an automatic trigger in the brain. She her was mouth, hungry. Her mouth starts salivating. She wants some smoked meat. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so Ugh. now she is crawling down the basement stairs very slowly. What is this why she wants to go down there? Like, is she so hungry she knows there's a burning body? And she's like, <laughs> fuck, I'm starving. <laughs> Uh, you'll see in a second. Oh, God. Like I said, I'm putting these photos on talkmurder.com. This is the basement. Can you describe this for our, our audience? This is the stairs she walked down. Um, I mean, it it looks like a, you know, like a dungeon almost. It looks like there's a face on that wall. I was thinking that too. Like Edgar Allan Poe. Well, it's like an imprint. Of if an... you see the paint and stuff, this house was vandalized by yeah. kids, you know. How they do. Mm. But it's just creepy looking. It is very creepy. It's extremely creepy, actually. But so she's crawling down those stairs and it takes her a long time to get even halfway. And it's pitch black. There's no light in here whatsoever. So mm. whatever's down here lives <laughs> in the darkness. Oh my god, like a <laughs> like murder house, like American horror story. <laughs> Okay, so she starts slowly moving down the stairs, and then she hears something down there scratching on the floor. Oh, God. <laughs> oh my God, stop, it's so creepy. <laughs> this is going to give me a nightmare. <laughs> it's 11.30 in the morning, and we're not going to be able to go to sleep tonight. <laughs> I'm really glad that we're doing this during the day. <laughs> I know. Oh, this is something where we would be like, like, c like, cuddled together and and not be. Able this yeah. is something where I would not be able to go back to my own home. You after. guys are not going to like the story. <laughs> I can tell you that we're, right now. We're like ten minutes in. There's a reason why podcasts don't cover this story, <laughs> especially the way I'm about to cover it. Fantastic. Great. Let's <laughs> let's just rip this bandaid off. What's on? What's in here? <laughs> So she gets she so she finally makes it to the floor and she notices the smell of burning flesh is now replaced by the overpowering stench of human excrement. Ugh. And she's actually since she's barefoot, she doesn't own any shoes. No, 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 no. She oh, can no. she can feel it squish in between her toes. Oh. You know, oh, is that a piece of corn? Baby. I'm just kidding. No. That was gross. <laughs> Let me pick it up and eat no. it. Stop. Oh my God. No. Stop. Oh, no. <laughs> it's bad enough to step in dog crap. Like, I, I couldn't even imagine stepping in human. Like, who is living down there or what? Or who? All right. This is from the, uh, the book we're reading, which I'm about to tell you what it is in a second. But can you read this, Nicole? Down in the basement, the thing had heard her coming. Jenny could hear it even now, scratching around on the packed dirt of the floor. It knew that she was here. Somehow, it knew. She finally gets close, and she can tell it's she's in the presence of someone. And a faint whisper, a dying, almost like the last moan, comes out. J Jenny? Jenny? I'm here now. Everything will be okay. I'm going to die. All right. <laughs> Yeah, how's that? Wow. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> wow. All right. So the person that uh, the person that was talking is this girl right here. If you want to describe her for our audience, she is a Caucasian female. Looks to be maybe like fourteen. 13 ish 13 ish mm -hmm. maybe like 11 or 12 i'd Close. say yeah her sister is 14 she's okay. the oldest sister so jenny is 
the younger sister. There's two sisters in the house that are not related to anyone else in the house. Mm -hmm. Is Jenny, the younger sister, who was crawling through the basement. And then Sylvia, which is the victim of tonight's story, she was the one that said, I'm going to die. Mm -hmm. Oh, my god! You know, she's down in the basement. She lives down in the basement. And she lives in her own filth, her own excrement. This is a better picture for her. Okay, so this she's is, a redhead. Yeah, yeah, this is a better picture for you right here. The The one in the middle, I believe, was colored in. Like Technicolor. Yeah, yeah Technicolor. Yeah. I don't think that's a real photo. I think that was just Technicolored in. The girl on the right, that is Jenny. Okay. So these two are sisters. Okay. The Lycan's sisters. This mm. is the, the true and horrid story of Sylvia Likens. It's Ooh. a very disturbing story. Just to let you know, this is going to be one of the worst, if not the worst. <laughs> okay, deep breath. Well, we can do this. Sylvia Likens. She was born on January 3rd, 1949. She was born in Lebanon, Indiana, so not mm -hmm. that far away from Indianapolis. And she ends up in the care of this mother who everyone calls mom and all of her kids is it like a foster situation it, yeah exactly but okay. it goes deeper than that and i'll get into that here in a second is this kind of like that movie mom that yeah is is this what it was based on i haven't seen that movie but i know there's two movies based on this i i haven't seen that one either the one with olivia what's her name olivia I can't think of her. She was in The Help. There's two movies based on this. I haven't seen either one of them. I'm sure they don't go into as much detail as I wanted to go into tonight. So the book we're reading tonight is from Ryan Green. Now, Ryan Green's kind of a new true crime author that I've been seeing a lot lately. He covers a lot of cases, but they're more condensed versions. It's like a Cliff Notes version. Uh, kind of like Cliff or... Notes. But for this story, there's only one other book written by Jenny, the sister, but you can't even find it in print anymore. It's oh, not wow. on the internet. So mm. this is what I got. Yeah. So a little bit about this episode structure before we go any further. We're going to talk about some torture, you know, a little bit of a torture. Little, a little of this, a little yeah. of that. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not going to tell you about the grandma or the sisters or any of the kids yet. I'm going to just kind of go into a little bit of the torture first. And then we're going to talk about Gertrude, the torture mom. And then the Lycan sisters, and then we're going to finish the episode. But anyway, the book from Ryan Green is called Torture Mom, A Chilling True Story of Confinement, Mutilation, and Murder. There are a lot of conversation pieces in this book, as well as other accounts. When this case went to trial, there was since there were so many people involved, this was kind of a, um, a Kitty Genovese type of thing. Ah, where it's a, like a bystander effect, mm -hmm. but also more like a Juko Furuto, the Japanese oh, girl, gosh, where that was awful. it's not just bystanders, but you have active participants. Mm. So all the stories came together at the end of this you know, tragedy, and the stories were true, but they were based from everyone's account downplaying their active role, but trying to tell the story, trying to stay out of trouble but tell the truth because they don't want to be, you know, they don't want people to know that they took an active role in this, like all the teenage boys and right. stuff that participated in this. So you have a lot of people corroborating and getting the story out there accurately, but everyone's trying to save their own ass type of thing. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cause no one wants to, you admit know, to admit to the shit they, they did. did. Yeah. yeah. Because this stuff is pretty fucking bad. Who likes hot dogs? I do. I do. I, but you know what I really, really miss about up north? They don't have any KM hot dogs anywhere down here. Mm. So I'll, my yeah. my next favorite is Nathan's. Yeah. I'll buy those. Yeah. That's they have those down here. But I do miss the KM old style, old home style. Mm -hmm. The Snap Franks. Those are good. Well, from now on, you will never look at a hot dog the same way. Great. Thanks for ruining another thing for us. <laughs> First carrots, now hot dogs. I think I ruined carrots, though. Yeah. Baby carrots will never be the same. <sighs> this drink is good. 
All right, so we're going to jump right into this hot dog fiasco. So Gertrude ran a very sadistic home, that home that I showed you earlier. But she still needed to keep up appearances through town. Mm -hmm. She can't have everyone know that there is a a an animal in the basement getting tortured and fed its own es excrement, which we'll get into in vivid detail oh, here in a God. little bit. Thank you. <laughs> like, why... <laughs> Why did we eat before this episode, John? <laughs> I don't know, dude. <laughs> the best way for Gert to keep up appearances throughout the neighborhood is to send all the children to church. Not only church, but to Christian-related events, charities, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Now, these kids, even her own kids, which were the majority of them, even her own kids were malnourished. But not so much as Jenny and her sister, which aren't blood they're not family mm -hmm. okay so this is before the torture starts sylvia who is really malnourished she goes to this church function and the reverend sees her stuff in her face and, and since she was so malnourished they had like finger they had finger foods and bagels and everything else she started stuffing her face because she hasn't had a meal in three days. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Is she sending them for like donations and for food and stuff? No, or? no. She's just sending them to keep up appearances. That's oh, the only okay. reason. The Reverend, Reverend Roy Julian, who would also play a part in the bystander effect. So if you don't mm. know what the bystander effect is, is when something happens and then everyone just does nothing about it. They don't take a part in it, but they don't actually do anything about it either. That's kind of the bystander effect. So that gets back to Gert because now he's worried and he starts showing up at the home more and stuff like that. Mm. Gert knows somehow it got through the grapevine, all these kids. When she gets home, Gert is waiting for her and the kids are sitting Indian style on the floor. Now, this isn't just her kids her sons and daughters, which they're all there. They're also neighborhood kids. And by kids, I mean, everyone is younger than 15, mm -hmm. you know, so teenagers. Ah, here comes the little piggy now. That's what she says. All the kids are now making oinking noises. Oh, my gosh. At her. Oink, oink. Because <laughs> she's a pig, you right? You like old huffs. Yeah. <laughs> And then Gert looks at Sylvia and says, why are you so disgusting? My goodness. This is about to be a sad, sad uh, oh, story. Oh, dude, this is fucking Shit. fucked, dude. <laughs> <laughs> this is fucked. And luckily, Jen has to read. <laughs> Did you think that nobody was going to notice you stuffing your face, pig? Did you think that my beautiful children had no eyes in their heads? Did you think that the whole neighborhood wasn't talking about how you took all the food that was meant for everyone and stuffed it down your filthy throat? Do you know that they're whispering now? They're whispering that old Gert doesn't take care of those children. That I starve you. Why would you want to shame me so badly? Why would you want to do that? Were you raised by animals? Did you grow up in a pigsty nursing from a sow? I, I didn't. I wouldn't. Gert jerked upright in the chair. So my babies are all liars now, are they? And all the good people at church, too? You're calling them all liars? When I had the reverend come around my door, banging and wailing at the sin of gluttony and how vile and debased you were, shoveling the scraps that the church provides to him to eat down your ma, am I meant to believe you? I am meant to believe a filthy liar like you over a priest? Over the word of God himself, we're all meant to listen to the gospel of Sylvia Likens, the filthy little liar. At this point, Gert, now this is in front of all the children, egging it on. She grabs Sylvia by the hair, drags her across the floor and into the kitchen. She reaches into the cupboard. She takes out a jar of hot dogs. Yeah, back in the day, you know, you had this yeah, jar yeah. of hot dogs. <laughs> Nasty. Like they have like pig's feet. And, yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, and then... She reaches up and gets a stale bun that has probably been there for a year. I'm, I'm sorry. You're what? You're hungry? Well, don't worry, dear. I got something for you right here. Oh, wait. Wait, I can't just give you something as plain as this. This isn't good enough for my little Miss Sylvie. It needs to be fancy. Let's make it fancy. So then she takes the ketchup and mustard and she squeezes both, one at a time, obviously, 
all the ketchup goes all over the floor and on the hot dog and the mustard and just uses the whole thing just all over the hot dog, all over the floor, all over her, the table, everything. She is just enraged squeezing this thing. She takes the hot dog and she pushes Sylvia in the chair by the kitchen table, takes her hair, pulls her neck Mm. back, takes the hot dog with her right hand. And she's doing this while she's saying what you are reading right now. Mm -hmm. She takes it and stuffs it right down her throat. Oh, my gosh. Now, obviously, it doesn't go all the way down her throat. Sylvia choked on the squirt of mustard that had made it past her closing lips and started coughing. Gert took her opportunity. She rammed the whole hot dog and bun into the girl's mouth, screaming, Eat it, you bitch! Eat every last bite! It reminds me of Matilda Uh, with mm, Miss Trunchbull and the chocolate cake. You've never seen Matilda? Uh Uh-uh. Oh, my God. That scene scarred me. Oh, man. That was a rough that was, scene. That's a childhood classic. Yeah. Is it? Mm-hmm. And she does this to Matilda? No. no. She makes... Miss Trunchbull is the, the head ma- headmistress. Yeah. And she makes a kid, like, eat a whole chocolate cake. Oh, shit. And it's, like, it's really gross. Yeah. Why did you do it, Sylvie? Why are you ruining that tight little body? Ooh. Ooh. That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> no me gusta that. Oh my god, this is oh my god, this literally sounds like my parents talking to me. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh shit. No man is ever gonna want you if you're fat. Nobody will ever want you if you're fat. Oh my god, it is flashbacks. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> You'll end up all alone. You're going to end up all alone in a house full of ungrateful little bastards that shame you every chance that they get. You're going to the hideous and bloated. You're going to be so fat that people laugh at you when they see you waddling down the street. Is that what you want, you rancid little bitch? You want to ruin your perfect little body by stuffing your face? (laughs) Holy shit. So she's purposefully starving her so that she looks slender? (laughs) Is she projecting? Like, what the hell? No, she's starving her because she's a fucking monster, as you're about to see. (laughs) Well, I get that. Oh, my God. She made it through half of the hot dog before nausea overtook her. The slimy ketchup was running down her face. The bright, stinging taste of the mustard was burning down her throat. When Gert's filthy fingers went into her mouth to try to force down the latest mouthful, it was too much. Sylvia choked and then retched up the noxious concoction that had been forced into her. So I looked up a little bit about how stomach bile works. Oh, Oh, God. I don't think you need to go into that. No, I feel like not just just talking about this. You you can skip your research on that one. Okay, I'm sorry. Well, let me just give you the 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 quick. The basics. When you swallow something, even if you throw it right back up, as soon as you swallow something, it gets surrounded by stomach bile. Yeah, like acid, Like immediately. So if it makes it down to your stomach, it will be immediately put into your stomach bile, which is like this greenish, brownish acid acid shit. Right. That's how it works. And the stomach bile kind of dissolves it from there. So it made it down to her stomach. I just, this is very important for story. Now, as you just read, she threw it back up and I can just imagine her sitting on the chair. She throws it back up and it's in her hands. Still, the hot dog has its shape, but it's now got the mustardy bile on it. Right. Ew. You know, and uh, and here you go. When the girl finally stopped throwing up, Gert patted her gently on the back and placed the surviving half of the hot dog in her hand. Just eat the rest, then you're done. So that's pretty bad, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't get any worse than that. Of course not. The girl stared up at her as she swallowed the last bite, beaming and victorious. I, I finished it. Gert's mouth was twisted into a comforting smile, but she shook her head. You did great, sweetheart, but you haven't finished yet. I told you to eat the rest. Now. No, no. <laughs> yep, we know where this is going. Oh, no. the, the rest, you know, the hot dog that she caught yep, in her it's, hand. It's the thrown up hot dog. Yep. Yeah. So yep. it's. Um, yep. OK. It's not only the one in her hand. It's also the one on the floor. Oh, my God. This is worse than, like, throwing up in your mouth and having to swallow it. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Don't 
don't you listeners act like you've never done that oh, before. Yeah. Like yeah. everyone has That's done that. That's the worst. That is awful. I'm still wondering why we we ate quiche this morning. That's the worst thing to eat. You didn't <laughs> give us any. No one said yeah, that no this direction. was going to be I'm disgusting. Like, oh, we're no, doing this today. You know today. what would have been worse if we grilled fucking hot dogs this morning? Oh my morning. god. <laughs> so it's day on the grill for a yeah, Wednesday. Yeah, it was going to be a while. Gert had her fingers tangled in Sylvia's hair, and she was leading her along the floor like a pet, guiding each mouth to each patch of vomit. The constant litany was hissing in her ear. Gert was hunched over so close that Sylvia could feel her dry lips on the back of her neck. Ugh. <laughs> I just... And remember, it's got the mustard on it, too. We got it's it. It's like Banks. bitter. We got it. Oh, my God. Like... <laughs> Her dry lips on the back of her neck. Like, this is just creepy. It's weird. It's That's creepy. Weird. The tight little body thing tight really weird. Body. Yeah, that out. gave me the creeps. But like, like it be like, why would you have your lips on her neck? Is she molesting these and kids? And why are your lips dry? Get some effing chapstick. Yeah, it's the fifties. Yeah. It's not the eighteen hundreds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Use some Vaseline if you have to. Go oh, d- she will eventually. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh no! <laughs> just read, Jen. Just read. Just I don't get... know. <sighs> Eat every last bite. Get fat. Get so fat that nobody will ever want you. Go on, piggy. Gobble it all up. You are so pretty. You were such a pretty girl, but you had to go and ruin it all. You ruined it all, and nobody wants you now. You're gonna be alone forever. Now that sounds like the voices in my own head. <laughs> <laughs> Jen. Okay, now that we're warmed up. Oh my up, god. <laughs> I'm going to need to drink some more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you might. Now that we're all warmed up, let's talk about the cola bottle. <laughs> oh no, god. I can only I can only imagine. <laughs> Like I when you, when I saw the, the title for the last slide, the hot dog, I was like, this can't be good. But it was totally different than what I expected. And I have a bad expectation for this slide that says the cola bottle, but I don't think it's going to be that far off from what I'm yep. expecting. Um, it's going to be pretty bad. What I didn't really mention, just to show you how sadistic Gertrude is, before the hot dog was covered in bile and it was just the dog she was stuffing it in her mouth and pulling it out now Ew. sylvia doesn't know what she was trying to do but she's basically like <laughs> you know like, doing an take this it, 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 like a it was a sexual yeah, thing. it's a sexual thing all right so this is an actual cola bottle from the time this period is, i have one of those well, this is a 1963 uh, edition cola bottle I looked up the different years, and do you notice, like, this is, uh, oh God. Just, you see I how the where, middle is kind of... I know where this is going. I don't where? like it. I where don't Where is like it going? It. It's In going her up her butt <laughs> <laughs> Or her other hole. I have a feeling it's a butthole, though. I don't know if it's a butthole. It could be her vagina. Oh. Okay, so the bottle, you know, they made it where you can hold it nice and easy, mm-hmm. but the middle is kind of protruding out like a bubble. There's actually a reason for that. I learned it at the Coke factory. I don't remember what the reason is, but there's a reason for the shape of the bottle other than gripping. I would imagine it has to do with like the car- something with the carbonation, maybe? I don't recall. We can oh. go there, though. It's in Atlanta. Yeah. <clears throat> I have a Coke bottle from the Coke factory. It's sitting on my bar. So after the hot dog incident, Sylvia still has to live her life. Now, keep in mind, this whole time during the hot dog incident, the children are egging it on. They're making oinking noises. They're participating 100%. This kind of reminds me of like the Fred and Rose West. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Too. But Syl- definitely of the Junko yeah. oh, story. Man. Yeah. So Sylvia has to eat still. And she's not eating at the house, so she has to go find her own food. And she does that by finding these cola bottles, because as you'll see, Gertrude, her life is cigarettes and Coca-Cola. That's it. She lives off the welfare of the government because she's got literally seven kids Mm -hmm. and another two that she takes care of. So she's living off welfare and all she does is smoke cigarettes and drink Coke all day long. So is is Sylvia taking the bottle refunds yeah, to get yeah, food? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, very smart. Uh. Yeah, exactly right. So she is taking not only their bottles. Now, she's taking these behind Gertrude's back 
Gertrude would beat the living shit out of her if she knew that there was money being made mm. and it wasn't going back to her. See, I didn't realize they did re- bottle refunds all, all the way back then. I knew that you left your old milk bottles out hmm. and the milkman would pick them up. I didn't know they were doing... Well, here's what I've... From what I understand, you wouldn't take them to a recycling center. You would take them to the local mini mart, you know, like the local TDs. Because back then, TDs. they would be able to feel it. <laughs> Which is Harris Teeter for yeah, anyone titties. who doesn't know TDs. Yeah, big old TDs. Shaking them TDs. Baby. Okay. Back then, the vendors there at Harris Teeter would be able to fill it up for you. So you would get refunded for the bottles if you brought them back mm. type of thing. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So you would just take them to your local shop. So she would do that. And she would scrounge the streets getting these bottles. And it was only enough to buy a candy bar or something cheap. And she would usually take, she would usually eat half of it and then take the other half back to Jenny, which was also starving. You got to protect your younger sister. This was working pretty well until one night when, because she would have to sneak out of her window room to do this. Mm -hmm. Sylvia got back at the house and whatever food she bought, a candy bar or whatever, Gert found her with half of it in her pocket because she was going to give it to her sister. From this point forward, Gert tells all the kids in the home, which all smoke cigarettes. Hmm. I mean, I guess it's the 60s. Yeah. They all smoke cigarettes. So now Gert thinks that she's a thief. She stole the food. And from this point on, she is a living ashtray. And oh no! And I'll I'll go over the medical examiner report at the end. But at the end, when she finally dies, there was over a hundred cigarette burns oh, on God. her body, and they started with the fingers. From now on, if you had to put your cigarette out, you would put it out on Sylvia's skin. Oh my God, that's so terrible. Yeah. Also, at this point, when she was getting burned by the cigarettes. She was malnourished and she was hurt so badly that her wounds would not heal anymore. Her body wouldn't heal itself, which helped the autopsy and the medical examiner know exactly what she went through because she never healed. She still had all everything on her body. Her body would not heal itself. Mm. Wow. So she got caught with that. She got beaten and she got their cigarettes put out on her. Another time she got caught sneaking into the home without food because she would just get the food taken away. And there was nothing but boys at the house this time. And there's something different that Gertrude does when there's only boys. This is her when Sylvia gets caught sneaking back into the house. In the living room, in full view of all the neighborhood boys, her skirts were lifted up and her panties were pulled down. Gert beat her with a belt until there were welts across her buttocks and thighs. And she dropped her onto the filthy ground. The children had all been informed of her indiscretion in one of Gert's sermons before the beating began. But now the time had arrived for them to participate in the punishment. Oh, no. Some of the neighborhood kids weren't even 10 years old. Wow. They have never seen a naked girl. And now Sylvia is forced to strip in front of them. All right, guys. So what we're going to read now, just a little trigger warning. Gert... And this is the actual dialogue that she uses. She uses the word whore and filthy whore a lot. So Jen's agreed to read that as it is, but we're not trying to be insensitive. This is just what it is. So Mm -hmm. I hope that it doesn't offend anybody. What's the matter, whore? You're suddenly shy now? You spent all night parading your body around for men, stripping off your clothes, spreading your legs for them. Now you're blushing? Gert was right behind her. She could feel the weight of the monster's presence against her back. She leaned in close enough for her to tarry breath to tickle Sylvia's ear. Are you too good for these boys? Is that it? You go whoring around all your fancy men, but these good boys here, you think you're better than them? So like I said, she only makes Sylvia strip and do what she's about to do when there's boys there and there's no girls there, which is... If you think about that, psychology, that is really fucked. So she's kind of saying she's she is accusing Sylvia of, of being, being a, a prostitute. Yeah. When, exactly. But, yeah. but she's she's not. No, she's she's going out and, and selling she's getting Coke cans Coke or Coke cans, bottles. Coke rather. bottles. Go on then, whore. Give the boys a show. I know you want to. They know you want to. Everyone knows you're a whore. So do it. Sylvia had already started shaking and her voice cracked as she asked, do what? Strip for them, whore. Sylvia closed her eyes. 
She undid her bra and dropped it to the floor. She hooked her thumbs in her underwear and jerked them down. She was crying. Gert growled. There's a good whore. Now give them a show. Let them see what you do for your money, whore. Now at this point, (sighs) Sylvia feels something cold in her hand, and that's that Coke bottle. Oh, God. Gert had picked a Coke bottle off the floor and put it in her hand. Now, Sylvia is a virgin. She has never even kissed anyone or anything. You understand? Mm Mm-hmm. And I was going to say this later, but when they did the autopsy, her hymen was still intact. So she is obviously not a whore, but she gets handed the bottle and she doesn't know what to do with it. She doesn't know what Gert wants her to do with it. Mm. Put on a show like you do when you're whoring. Shove it inside. Nothing she was saying made any sense. Sylvia just stared at her blankly until Gert growled and seized her by the wrist, guiding the bottle down until it nudged against her bruised vagina. No, she couldn't possibly want that. Gert growled. Do it, you whore. Do it. The chant got picked up. The boys' usual pubescent voices seemed deeper than usual. Some animal part of them was growling out. Do it. Do it. Do it. A little whimper escaped her as she shoved the bottle deeper inside and the boys, they leaned forward, practically salivating. Oh my God, Bert was losing patience. Holy shit. You keep all the men waiting this long? Hurry up. Sylvia tried to push on past the pain, but it was like the bottle had hit some sort of barrier inside her and couldn't go any further. Which is her hymen, right? Gert growled. I said, hurry up. Well, yeah, now this is where the bottle gets, is wider, I'm assuming. Yeah, but the... Uh, And that's, that's... it's wide like, yeah but her hymen was intact that's what the autopsy report said so uh, yeah it is interesting i guess i don't know how that works i mean it can take a, a lot for it to break potentially some people don't really have hymens mm-hmm. that can be broken anyway it's, oh, okay. it's kind of a it's a personal yeah oh, okay the old woman's hand had darted out and she slapped the flat bottom of the bottle as hard as she could <clears throat> Half the length of it vanished inside of Sylvia. Then the pain came. She fell to the floor, screaming so loud that it startled even Gert. Blood trickled down the glass to pool on the floor between Sylvia's knees. Gert stood over her and scoffed. I'm sure you've taken bigger than that, whore. Now fuck yourself with it. Oh, my God. I know, dude. Oh, my God. She's like a child. Interesting that... Wow. 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 Uh, So now it's all the way inside of her vagina... And she feels something tear. And from this point on, she is not going to be able to control herself from urinating anymore. It just comes out. She tore whatever inside to the point. I mean, she you could hear it tears like. And she falls to the ground. She says, please help me. Oh, God, please help me. Gert rolled her eyes in disgust. None of us want to watch you catch your whore diseases, touching your filthy slit. Pull it out. I, I, I can't. Sylvia sobbed. Gert grabbed the bottle, drawing another shriek out of Sylvia. Ridiculous girl. She tore it out of Sylvia and another shrill wail came with it. There was a half an inch of blood and other murky fluids pooled out inside the bottle when Gert held it up into the light. So I don't Ugh. think that was urine. I don't, baby. No. I don't think that was urine. That was just other internal fluids. Oh my just god! Just as an FYI. Oh, I don't know what it was. It fucking made me throw I, well, you up. You said though. you said that she had a urine. No, no, urinate. no. Oh, that's a good point. No, I'm I'm saying from this point after, and and I'll get to this in a little bit. But the reason she's sleeping in the basement when we started the story is because she kept wetting her bed. But she can't help it anymore because uh, she of da- the bottle incident. Yeah, the internal something. damage. Now she can't help but urinating oh, everywhere at, at a whim. Like she can't help it. She can't control it. Gotcha. Yeah, that's what I meant. Got it. All right. This is Gertrude Nadine Benizweski. Now that is her first husband's last name. Her maiden name is Gertrude Van Fossen. Van Fossen. Gertrude Van Fossen. Do you want to guess German. where? Kind of. Austrian? Polish. Ah. Uh. She was born September 19, 1928, right before the Great Depression. She was born in Indianapolis, Indiana. Now, she was actually heavily doted on by her father. She didn't. As in. <laughs> no. <laughs> I Just got to be clear here. I didn't see anything. I didn't see anywhere 
claiming sexual abuse or anything. Okay. Well, you said by her father. What was her relationship like with her mother? Mm, was her mom jealous? Yes. Ooh. That's a, yeah, that's a good point. In fact, when she was a baby, she just came out, you know, with a vagina. <laughs> that's where they come from. Yep. That good is job. true. Yeah. So the father has an instant connection with Gertrude hmm. and the other sisters, because she's one of many. You know, this period, people were having eight, nine children. Yep. So her sisters saw that daddy's given her all the attention and they were like, ah, you know, it's because she's the youngest. Well, then she started having other siblings. So she's not the youngest anymore. And she's still getting all daddy's attention. Not only that, the mother is getting jealous because she's getting all of daddy's attention. Hmm. She was the perfect child in daddy's eyes. And she was clearly far from perfect. Well, that. I think is the thing that started it because the jealousy from all the other kids and since they were such a prominent name in school in grade school, they kind of influenced her surroundings and the people, her peer group. She was ostracized by Mm. her friends and her family because of her being too close to dad. Mm. Does that make sense? (laughs) They ostracized her. Then the abuse started Anyway, she was fine and protected because she's with dad and and she doesn't care about being ostracized. She's got her father. Mm -hmm. When she was seven or eight years old, dad was teaching her how to read at the table and they would both laugh together because she would always mess up and he'd laugh out of nowhere. He did his usual laugh (laughs) and his face kind of went in shock almost it was i don't know why he died but it's like he had a brain aneurysm oh wow and heart he attack fell, or something yeah heart attack or something and his head fell and boom hit the table Oof. and blood's everywhere and he's dead on the floor Oof. in front of the seven-year-old gertrude and then after that now that the breadwinner's gone now the mom has to take care of all these kids by herself wow. that's when she starts getting abused at home When Daddy made a silly face, her giggles got even more pronounced. The crinkles disappeared from behind his eyes, but that silly face kept her laughing. It was as if he had seen a ghost. His eyes were bulging like they would pop out of his head. She kept laughing as he toppled forward off his chair. His face bounced off the corner of the table on his way to the floor. Her fit of giggles turned into a strange shriek. Daddy? Oh my gosh, like... This is traumatic. Yeah. So now she's ostracized by all the women and she starts to notice that guys, that the boys are paying her more attention because she's developing, obviously. Mm -hmm. And she starts to learn that if she lets the boys touch her, like her breast, then she'll get more attention. You know what I'm saying? She'll be less ostracized. She's looking to fill the yeah. void of attention. Mm. And she needed that male attention to replace her dead father. Right. So she would notice she would get attention if she let the boys touch her breast. And she would get even more attention if she touched them as well. Now, she is 12, 13 years old. So this is not good, right? Every boy in the school was suddenly interested in her, and plenty of boys who she had never even heard of started to come calling for her, too. Kind of like an Easy A. Yeah. A what? The movie Easy A. I haven't seen it. That's a good one. Yeah. So this is not good. She is now very sexually active, and the way she grew up, sex, and if you're Southern Baptist, You'll agree with this. So I'm just saying sex is not supposed to be enjoyed by women. Sex is painful. You're supposed to take it and then bear children. That's what she believes. And that's what Southern Baptists believe, too. Mm. I'm I grew up that way. It's a mortal sin to, to have enjoy it. to enjoy sex. That's why you only do it but in the only, missionary but, position. But the guy. <laughs> But the guys can enjoy sex. Yeah, it's totally the, cool. But the women have to the women are in pain. Because it's something they have not to do. Enjoying it. Exactly, well, and so that's that's how she grew up, and and I get that. I grew up Southern Baptist. <laughs> I was like, oh, do you? <laughs> no, I grew up Southern Baptist. I understand that. Like that that was taught in our church. At least in Catholicism, they say you can enjoy it. You just have to be married, right? 
So she drops out of school at 16 years old and she marries a police deputy, John Banaszewski, the one that has all the kids. Six of the kids in the home are his. So they were not biologically hers. No, they were. They were. Oh, she yeah, had yeah. six kids with yeah, him. She had six oh, I kids with him. No, no, no. I'm sorry. Sorry. It. He had no kids to begin with. He was 18. They got together. She has six kids. You know, they all came out of her vagina. Got so, it. Okay. <laughs> Just letting you know, they're hers. Okay. Okay. He was a police deputy, and he Ironic. married. He married her for two, huh? Ironic. He married her for two reasons. Reason number one is because all the boys are talking about, you know, that she'll give it up. She'll have sex really easy. Okay. Number two, he wanted a maid. So guys around this time, and I even know some guys like this, and a lot of people would think this is me, mm-hmm. but. Boys would move out of their childhood home and try to replace their mother by getting, you know, a maid in the house, you know, by marrying, by, by marrying someone like their mother. <laughs> There's some Freudian shit in there. You can uh, unwrap that later. But anyway, John wanted sex. Obviously, that's why he married her. Oh, wait, his name was John, too. <laughs> I know. I, thought you, I, I was like, are you actually, was that a Freudian yeah, I was, slip? <laughs> I was like, are you sure you meant to say that? John, not the narrator of this podcast, but another John. He wanted sex, but like I said, she viewed sex as a mortal sin. And she basically, I'll put it bluntly, was a pillow princess. Well, I don't think it was. If she's not enjoying it, she's not a pillow princess. Well, she's in the missionary position. She's not doing all the freaky deeky stuff that guys are talking about. Yeah, you're not a princess if it's something that you like are enjoying and like wanting. Oh well, you know what I mean. She would lay there, but the talk around town was, "Oh, Gertrude, she's she got the magic hot sauce," you know. And then he finds out, well, shit, she's a pillow princess. She just she's not a pillow princess. She's just. She's just. Well, you know what I'm saying. She doesn't. She doesn't do. She's boring in the sack. Yeah. yeah. She doesn't do. She's just. She's not letting kinky. it happen yeah. to her. There's no like reverse cowboy. Cowgirl. Oh, reverse. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck. <laughs> I don't know. You died. Hey, 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 like what you like. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, there's no Cleveland steamrollers. <laughs> Like, where do they come up with the names for these things? I That's what I know. want to know. I don't oh, even know, shit. like, more than five of them. I feel like someone just, like, put them on Urban Dictionary one day, and they're like, <laughs> this is going to catch on. It's like, stop trying to make fetch happen. John started beating her because she can't cook. She's never cooked in her life, and she can't have sex very well. So he starts beating her. She gets pregnant constantly eventually having six kids with him. Now, she married him twice. They divorce once. She marries someone oh. else, then goes back to him. They have two more kids, which makes up the majority of the household. That's the Banisweski kids. Now, he would beat her so bad that she would be disoriented for days. Now, keep in mind, he is a... Cop. A cop, a police deputy, a well-respected one. So he knew how to beat her in ways that it wouldn't be known that he's beaten her mm. type of thing, you know? But he would beat her so bad sometimes she couldn't even get out of bed. And this is crazy. This blew my mind. And I'm telling you, guys, I speak for most guys when I'm about to say this right here. And I'm not trying to be insensitive, but this really blew my mind. And I can speak for most guys. Well, we did not know this at all. I can promise you that. But she found out what makeup is. And th- this, this is crazy, for me at least. Her mother had never taught her how to put it on. Such a thing would have been shameful on a little girl. Whorish. But Gert learned by watching other women in public bathrooms. The first time she saw someone powdering on foundation, it was like a revelation. And suddenly the waiting time between a beating and venturing outside again was halved. Isn't that crazy? It's kind of like like watching YouTube videos. Watching YouTube videos now. Yeah. Like for makeup tutorials. Yeah. Well, she's she's just learning. Like, wow, she can cover she's it learning all by up. Watching. No, no, yeah. no, no. I'm no. What she's saying is, if I put on makeup, he'll beat me less, right? No, no, I, no. That she can just go out again. Like she she doesn't like have to hide. If I put on makeup, oh, I can go out shit. and people won't know that I'm getting oh, beat by my shit. husband. Okay, sorry, I misinterpreted that. I thought she said if I put on makeup, I'll look better, so he won't beat me. 
So, you, like I said, guys that don't know be. about this. Well, that could be too. Like, if he was beating, well, it depends on why he was beating her. If it's he was crazy. Beating her though, because like, of be, if he was beating her because she was bad at sex, like that's one thing. But if he was beating her because she looked disgusting, then that would be another reason why she would maybe put on makeup so that she got beat less. You know? Yeah. Well, she had all these kids, and eventually she gets divorced from this guy. Marries a guy named Edward Guthrie. Now, the, she miscarries a baby the first time here, and we see this in a lot of stories. She really sinks into depression mm-hmm. with this, and I know that's a, a common thing, but a lot of the killer story, killer women's stories, they do have a prior miscarriage. They divorce, like, within a year, and then she marries John again after they bump into each other. Then John and her get divorced again. Now, fast forward, she's 37 years old. She has six kids. And she's a single mother, which is highly looked down on at the time. She finds a new husband, even though they never marry, which is important because she'll she claims to everyone, the whole neighborhood that they're married, even though there's no certificate. Hmm. Well, what is their common law marriage in Indiana? I don't think that was a thing in this time. I don't don't know. know. I I don't know. Anyway, his name was Dennis Wright. He didn't want kids, just sex. Gert did get pregnant by him once, though. And this is what happened. It was only when he started to hammer his knuckles down into her stomach that anything like a rational thought even crossed his mind. He didn't have to have a baby. She couldn't do this to him. He wouldn't let her do this to him. He hit her there again and again. At some point, she had started to scream and cry. Now she was begging him. Not the baby, please. Anything but the baby. He had almost left the bed as he drew up his fists and hammered them down again and again. There was blood on his hands and there was blood on the sheets, but it wasn't enough. He wanted the baby out of her. He wanted it broken and gone. He didn't care if it was a baby. He didn't care if it was right or wrong. He wasn't going to let her do this to him. Let her do this to him? More like you you got her pregnant, sir. Mm-hmm. He didn't want a kid, but yet there were six kids already living at right. the house. It's crazy. Anyway. It's like, what's one more? She does miscarry again, that baby. But um, she hides another baby from him that he made, you know, mm-hmm. during sex. And she gets pregnant. She hides it. And then he is like, re- OK with it. Not OK, but he's like, you know, whatever. I don't care. So mm-hmm. she actually has a baby by him, Dennis Jr. So now she's up to seven kids of her own. And then as soon as she gets out of the hospital, she comes home and notice that none of his stuff is there. He done left. Wow. So now she's got seven kids. She's 40 years old. The two Lycan sisters, Sylvia being the oldest, Jenny being the youngest, they had a mother, Betty, father, Lester. They weren't horrible parents, but they were just not good parents. They Mm -hmm. weren't beating them or anything, but they were having their own relationship problems and the whole world revolved around their relationship. Mm. Anyway, so it's like they didn't have time for them. Mm. Yeah. Like it was, they 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 were were in the love state. Oh, love is the only thing that matters type of thing. So like they, they were kind of like, they, it's not that they mistreated them. They just didn't 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 do anything for them. Yeah. 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 Okay. <clears throat> but they weren't terrible parents. They just weren't really good. Attentive. Attentive parents. The two sisters were born in Lebanon, Indiana. How they ended up in Gert's household was this. One day, the mother, Sylvia and Jenny's mother, says, We're getting out of here. I'm I'm done with that, guys. I'm done with my husband's infidelities, his drinking, all this, his mistresses. They pack a bag, all their bags, while he's at work. They get on a bus. They drive until they have no more money. Now, the mother obviously didn't prepare for any of this. She didn't even have any money. All they had money for is the bus fare, and they stop riding whenever that money went out. Mother gets arrested in a grocery mart trying to steal food. And then Paula, which is Gertrude's real daughter, uh, the oldest daughter, from the John, the cop guy, mm-hmm. right? She has a problem, if you will, of rescuing stray cats and dogs mm. at the time. So she's she's literally walking the street at the time looking for cats and dogs. And just by fate, those two girls were also walking the street while their mom was in jail for the night looking for food. So it was like a, it was fate. 
And she's like, come, you know, I got a new catch. Come home. You know, mom will take care of you. And at first, Gertrude was very nice. Come on in, sweeties. You know, stay here as long as you want. But then both the parents, Betty and Lester, show up at Gert's house. And so obviously they rekindle their relationship. Mm. But instead of saying, you know, come, you know, I need my daughters back. You know, thanks so much for watching them. They said this. Hey, we have a proposal for you. My wife and I just got hired on to a traveling carnival that was big back in the day. Mm -hmm. You know, the traveling Ah, carnivals. So we can't really watch these two kids, our own daughters. So how about they stay here and in return, I will send you $20 a week through the mail, a check in the mail from our carnival earnings, which this was a lot. Is, yeah, this sounds like Les Miserables. Go on. Yeah, 20 bucks a week, which, you know, is is a lot of money back in the day. But that's means unlimited cigarettes and unlimited cola for Gert. Mm-hmm. And that's all she wants. She doesn't even eat. She just drinks Coke. The first beating, she was nice up until because every week she's getting 20 bucks every week. The first beating was in the first week when that check didn't come. Mm. And Uh. she beat Sylvia and Jenny, both of them, so bad. And she said, you know, it's your your dad is leaving you off here. I ain't got the money. Take care of you bitches. All this stuff. I mean, you've read some of the stuff. Mm -hmm. The check was actually sent, but the post office had made a mistake and it arrived a day late. Oh. But after then, she still got checks, but now she is now she kind of likes beat. beating him. Yeah, exactly. Mm. And at one point, I'm not going to get into this, but the parents came back and they visited her at the park. And the mother's like, why are you so skinny? Her daughter, which was co- coached by Gert, said something like, oh, I'm going on a diet or something. I don't know. You know, mm. they were they, they were coached what to say. Right. Now, Sylvia ends up in the basement because this is where she was sleeping At the time, if she wasn't sleeping on dirty clothes. But after the cola bottle incident, and I'm showing you the bed right here. Mm -hmm. It's a mattress on the floor. It's not, you know, it's whatever. She was sleeping on mattresses and clothes. But after the cola bottle incident, she started wetting the bed. Mm. Ah. And Gert would thought she was an animal, a filthy animal. So she's now sleeping in the basement (sighs) with no light whatsoever. I mean, her insides were literally ripped to the point where she couldn't control it. Oh, wow. Between the three of them, the boys managed to carry the limp Sylvia upstairs and into the bathroom where Gert and Paula were waiting. There was one bath in the house, a claw-footed thing that had to be filled up with hot water boiled on top of the stove. Steam was rising up off the water despite the relative warmth of the room. Without thinking, Ricky dipped his finger in to check the temperature and then let out a yelp. It was scalding hot. Gert nodded to them. Dunk her in then. Oh my gosh. Living in the basement, sleeping in your own excrement, stuff like that, you got to get bathed. So she would bathe her every day, these boys, these neighborhood boys, which is crazy how the secret kept, you know, in the house. Yeah. But they would come and drag her upstairs and throw her in this boiling water. And this is what the boiling water looked like. Oh, oh my God. That's dirty. Yeah. And then I think it may be blood. I mean, who knows? I mean, Ugh. but it was at, probably hot enough to give her boils on yeah. her skin. Yeah. Like, what, and can I assume that she stopped going to school? Yeah. Oh, yeah. She stopped mm-hmm. a long time ago. Jenny only left the house a little bit, but no one. The whole town knew that this was going on. And I'm not going to get into this, mm-hmm. but. I mean, the priests knew, right? The priests Everyone knew, knew. and I'm not going to get into this, but everyone in town believed Gert, and all the children corroborated, all of her children, that Sylvia was a prostitute and a whore, right? I mean, they believed this. The Reverend believed this. Gert would go to the Reverend. I, You know, I had to put up with her. She walks the street at night. Oh, my word. Yeah, so they... They knew about this. They didn't know probably the extent of it, but they sure as hell knew that shit like this was going on. You know, the bystander effect. And everyone thought she was a prostitute. So even if Jenny did escape and say, hey, my sister is locked in the basement, they wouldn't believe her because no one believed these two girls. Right, because they're just kids. One little thing about the bystander effect, someone did kind of stick up and try to stop it. Ricky... The, the one that put his finger in the water and said, this is boiling. We can't mm-hmm. put her in here. He was 
uh, 14 years old at the time. Okay. And he was like, I, no, let's not do this. Let's not do this. It's, it, you know, this is not right. So Gert grabs Ricky by the hand, takes her into her bedroom. And w- while Sylvia is screaming in this scalding bathtub, and she kind of makes him forget about it. If you want to read this. Oh, no. Oh, wow. <sighs> She slipped down onto her knees in front of him and unbuttoned his cord with deft fingers. She licked her lips as she looked up at him. I need an assistant, Ricky. Someone to help me deal with that monster in the basement. Someone to help me with the lifting and carrying. I don't have any money to pay you with, but I can pay you in other ways. Ugh. Now she oh, gross. Yeah. Oh, she's like God. blaming this poor child of being a whore, and she's whoring her out herself out to children. Yeah, that's gross. Yeah, this is this is and a like, despicable human being. He, yes. he, he was happy as hell, you know. I well, mean, he's a fourteen year old. He's never done anything, you know. And now he just got his wiener sucked, and now he's going to constantly have sex with this woman. I mean, he's pretty yeah, happy about she's that. Like sixty, he don't care. He's fourteen year old. He just likes seeing boobies. I would not want to see those boobies. Mm-mm. Mm-mm, yeah. She was not a nice looking woman either. No, no. Like, and I'm not talking about attractive. She just looked mean, but yeah. she wasn't that attractive either. She looked like a crotchety yeah. witch. Yes. Like you put a, a hat on her, she'd easily yeah. become the witch from Snow White. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Mm-mm. No, that's Wizard of Oz. Yeah. Which creeps me the fuck out. It does. One of her sons, a 12-year-old John Jr., would go down. His job was to go down and kind of clean up the basement. He would go into the basement. There was a coffee cup, like a tin, filled with her urine. He would make her drink the urine. Oh, my God. And, quote, scoop up her feces with a gardening trowel. Then Gert would pin Sylvia's jaw open while John (gasps) poured her own (gasps) excrement down her throat. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, this poor girl. We're almost done. Good, because I don't know how much more I can take of this. Mm -hmm. Well, there's one more kind of bad thing. Let's get it over with. And I'm not going to go into detail, but this is right before she died. There were neighborhood kids that would go down. Now, she's completely naked at this point in the basement. There were kids that would just go down and use her as a a punching bag. All all these people went to trial. None of them got convicted, but we'll go on to that. But perhaps the last rage that Gert had is when she had an idea to take a needle and like a sewing needle and a lighter and brand Sylvia. Because if she was branded as a prostitute, then all the men would know she's a prostitute and she would never be able to get a man Again, I don't know if that's so true. <clears throat> just there, I get like that's just weird <laughs> logic. It's well, almost like an, what's another excuse to torture her? You yeah. know what I mean? Well, so yeah, well, it's no, sad. I mean like like just because someone knows that you're a prostitute doesn't mean that they don't want you. That's yeah, pretty woman could totally happen. I mean, excuse me, just because someone knows that you're a sex worker doesn't mean that you know. Yeah, but do you, do you understand what I'm saying? Brand? Yes, I understand what you're saying. Brand? Like what? Like physically burn something onto her yes. body. Yes, so I know. They took and these are this is not Gert. Uh, Gert did the first letters, mm-hmm. but the kids stepped in, and there were like six or seven of her own kids and neighborhood boys doing this. Now she's completely naked. This is in the basement. They take the needle, they flame it up, get it hot, and they start branding her. Do you remember the first of the episode when I said burning flesh? Burning flesh? Yeah. This is the burning f- this is the burning flesh. Uh. Now, there is a photo of this and I'll put it on talkmore.com. This is this sums up the entire case. This photo right here. What does it say? On her stomach. That's her stomach. Oh my gosh. I am a prostitute and proud of it. They burned that into her body. I'm a prostitute and proud of it. And it's all over her very, very thin stomach. Yeah. That's the real photo um, of that right there. Like, I can't even imagine how long that took. Yeah. So that's not a short. Like, that's not USDA beef. Yeah. Like branding. You know what I mean? Like, that's. They wrote it with a needle. God. What was the official cause of her death? 
That's a good question. This is from the medical examiner. Sylvia suffered over 100 cigarette burns on her body. She had suffered from second and third degree burns. There were severe bruising, muscular and nerve damage. The cause of death was multiple brain hemorrhages. But it was also God. possible that the combined shock of her injuries was too much for her body to tolerate. Wow. In her death, before she died, she actually bit through her own lip, leaving them attached only by trailing threads of connective <gasps> tissue. Her throat and vagina had swollen shut, mm. although an examination of the canal revealed that her hymen was intact. So it's wow. kind of ironic that she's a prostitute, you know, and her hymen is intact. And, and this is her death photo right here. Oh, <sighs> my gosh. Poor thing. So that that's what awful. she looked like. This is what she looked like before, and that's what she looked like oh, then. Oh my word! So poor child. So that is a Sylvia liking story. No one deserves anything like that. But you're gonna hate how it ended. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a lot of people were tried for it. So how did they find out that she was dead? Like, did did Gert report? I've got a dead child. Like, the, how did that? Or did Jenny decide to say something? No, Jenny did eventually, but here's what happened. They were going to throw the body by a dumpster. No. And they got Sylvia to write a letter that said, and there's, I couldn't find the letter itself, but it, the letter said, dear mom and dad, I am a prostitute, a street walking whore. I was jumped by a bunch of guys and they branded this on my skin. If I'm dead, it's because... You know, I'm a prostitute or whatever. They got Jenny to write that. As no, playing. they got Sylvia to write it when she was oh, dying. Oh, she was still yeah, alive. Yeah. Oh, okay. Gosh. And, yeah. And then the cops had came eventually and they were going to leave because they've been there a lot. And then Jenny, you know, for some reason speaks out mm -hmm. and says, they killed her. Well, good for her. And yeah. saying as soon as the yeah. cops heard that, they're like, okay, we need to interview everyone here. And as soon as they went to the basement, obviously they put everybody in handcuffs. Wow. Gert was found guilty of first degree murder. Okay. She was granted a life sentence imprisonment without parole. I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. However, she appealed the trial because they didn't move the case to another city. So... You know, you know how the high profile cases, they move it to another city. Right. So she appealed on the fact that it was extremely prejudicial atmosphere in Indianapolis. Oh, because, you know, all the people that didn't say anything before would definitely find her guilty. Right. Yeah. And oh, please. there was a lack of testimony this time and her sentence was reversed <gasps> and she only served 18 years in prison. What? She came up for parole in 1985. She actually died in 1990, a free woman. She died of lung cancer. Wow. A lot of these guys died of cancer. I guess that's karma. And uh, well, most of these the kids, smoking. most of these kids changed their names and everything else. Here's like some of the trial here. You see that guy behind her? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's John. That's her son. So they were all in trial too. Did any of the kids get convicted? Yeah, I mean, they were, they, they they were served, young. They so. served months. Yeah. You know, months, not years or anything else. They end up changed in their name. In fact, this is kind of crazy. Apollo, the, the daughter, the oldest daughter, she was convicted of second degree murder. Wow. She made a plea bargain admitting to voluntary manslaughter. She serves only three years. But was she the is, only one that was an adult? I wonder if that's why. Yeah, I think so. Mm. But this is kind of crazy. She lives in obscurity in Iowa. And in 2012, she was exposed on Facebook and lost her job as a teacher's aide. Wow. In which she was taking care of other people's children for years <gasps> with no one knowing who she really was. That was 2012. Wow. wow. Eight years ago. Wow. So she's still alive. And and she had a very, very active role in the torture and the participation in the torture. Wow. Well, good then that she lost her job, but... So it's kind of like those Nazis that ended up being, they, they yeah, ended they, up moving to Brazil yeah, and being yeah. uh, teachers and professors. Anyway, that's the Sylvia Lycan story. doesn't get any worse than that. Wow. Yeah, that, that, that was, was pretty brutal. It was. Yeah, that's the story on Sylvia Lycan. It's kind of a crazy story. If you enjoyed that episode, uh, hit that subscribe button on whatever podcasting app you use. And I look forward to the next episode with you guys. We release them every Tuesdays and Fridays now. My name is John. I'm sitting here with Jen and Nicole. And until next time, good night, you lovely, lovely people.